Beck. I teach at Highland and Kingsley. Hi, Ms. Cappuccini. I'm at Bel Air. Hi, Mrs. David. I teach at Pierce Downer Indian Trail in El Sierra. And I'm Mr. Bologno, and I teach at Whittier, Hillcrest, and Fairmont. And we're the District 58 Art Team! Hello friends, Ms. Beck here. Today we're going to be exploring the question, what is art? Since there's not one universal definition, let's break it down. So what can art be made of? Art can be 2D, like drawing, or painting. It could even be something like photography, or 3D, like ceramics, or sculpture. It could also be film or animation, and so much more. So, where can we find art? The first place you might think of is a museum. But art can exist in so many different places, such as in public spaces, or even in your own home. Art doesn't just exist in our own community. Art exists in communities all around the world. Who is art for? Well, art is for everyone. So now that we know what art's made of, where we can find it, who it's for, ultimately, Art is a visual experience that makes you think, feel, and see the world in brand new ways. Hey, it's Ms. Cappuccini. We're going to talk about who is an artist. There are many famous and not so famous artists from history. Maybe you've heard of some of them. You may recognize these guys from art history. Leonardo, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael, who were all famous, well-known artists. Maybe you've also heard of Claude Monet, Hokusai, Diego Velasquez, Mary Cassatt, Amrita Shared Gill, Frida Kahlo, Elizabeth Catlett, or Jean-Michel Basquet, all artists from history. There are many living artists creating new and exciting kinds of artwork. Here are a few examples. Carmen Herrera, Anish Kapoor, Field Collop, Carol Walker, James Terrell, Carrie James Marshall, Raul de Nieves, Yeyoy Kusama. Did you know that your art teachers are artists too? Mr. Bologna made this public artwork a mural downtown that represents every school mascot in the Downers Grove community. Mrs. Lukes made this painting of the Chicago skyline. She has it framed on the wall in her home. Mrs. David carved a linoleum block to create this graphic linoleum block print. Miss Beck created this 3D piece from earthenware clay and she told me a secret about it. It's also a rattle. Pretty cool. And I am an oil painter. I set up these sunflowers on a table in my backyard to paint them from life. There's one more category of artist we want to talk about. You are an artist. You are a creative person, trying new things and taking risks in art class. And we love that. We love to see what you make and we love to know more about you through your artwork. So don't forget, you are an artist. Why do people make art? They make art to express themselves. You can see Chuck Close and Pablo Picasso created this this self-portrait for Chuck Close and um, this painting by Pablo Picasso to get their emotions across and express what they're feeling. People make art to explore the world. This painting by Hokusai of the Great Wave kind of documents that wave. And Ansel Adams is a photographer and he takes pictures, um, used to take pictures across the United States. And there he is holding his picture. Sometimes we make art to give as a gift. 
This is the Statue of Liberty. It was a gift from France to the United States and it's in New York. New York City, you can see the city skyline behind it. It's nice to give a piece of art to someone else. It makes you feel happy inside, like you're filling your bucket um, inside of your heart to give something to someone else. And it makes the other person feel special that you took the time to make a gift for them. Sometimes artists make art to capture a moment or feeling. Renoir captured a moment of some people at a boating party. People make art to honor someone that they admire. Kente Wiley and Amy Sherald created these two paintings of former President um, Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. People make art to put words into pictures. Hearts sometimes could mean love. They're kind of silly, fun hearts. And then peace signs mean peace and calmness in the world don't even have to say those words because you can just see the pictures and that would make you think of the word. Sometimes art is created to tell a story. This is a story quilt by Faith Ringgold. It's a sewing of fabric. She created a painting on the fabric of um, the top of a New York City building where people would hang out in the summer. Sometimes we use art to calm ourselves. Say Yoi Kusama is the artist on the left. She would paint different patterns and bright colors and she said that she feels like her brain is just opening up and relaxing and she can kind of follow a path and feel calm when she's creating. And this painting by Leonardo da Vinci called the Mona Lisa just makes me feel calm looking at it. She's very relaxed and peaceful. Also we make art to have fun. Mark Paper Scissors is sitting in this big pile of scraps of paper that he's going to cut up and create collages with. I'm sure you've created a collage before. And I also included the Crown Fountain. It's in downtown Chicago. The LED changes to different people's faces and it looks like they're spitting water. I don't know if you've been there, but it's a pretty cool place. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you why, why people create art. Have a great day. Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bologno and I'm here to tell you how to use your sketchbook. First of all, your sketchbook is a visual diary. Feel free to use it anytime. When you come up with an idea, draw it. You have all these pages in there. Practice, practice, and practice. I have a suggestion for you. Maybe make a time-lapse video as you sketch to show your progress. Always remember, share your work on Seesaw. But the most important rule of them all have fun! Hi guys, Mrs. Luke's here. Today we're going to talk about how to find our activities in Seesaw. If you look up in the right hand corner, your name is going to show up up here. Once you find your name, you're going to click on it and there's going to be a drop down menu that's going to show you where all your classes are. Once you find your classes, you're obviously going to click on your art class. And then once in your art class, you're going to move over to the other side of the screen. On the other side of the screen, there will be a little um, light bulb, and with that light bulb, you're going to click on the light bulb, that's your activities button, and then all of the activities that are assigned to you are going to show up in your feed over here on this side. You can click on your activity, there will be directions in there. A lot of times there's going to be voice directions, so if you want to click on those voice directions to listen how something is. Sometimes there's going to be a keynote presentation. Sometimes um, there might be a template that you're going to add stuff. Sometimes there might not be a template. So you're just going to have to kind of look for that. Once you finish a project, what you want to do is you want to click that green plus button. Once you click that green plus button, you can go ahead, you can add it to your journal. It'll show up on the screen. You can add text, you can record, you can do um, the caption down at the bottom. If you need to draw on it, you can draw on it. But please, please, please don't forget, once you're done, to go ahead and click that green check button and that will send it off to us. Thanks, guys. So now that you learned about all these things you're going to be doing in art this year from all of the different art teachers in our district, when you do an activity, if you have any questions, make sure to contact your own art teacher. All right? We're excited to hear from you, and take care. Bye, everyone. Say bye, Yoda. Bye. See, it's not from my mouth. <laughs>